Hello everybody, this is Training Gamer back and it is time to conclude the group stage. And we're concluding it with group I of course, the, the group that was added because I got so many lovely entries. In this in this video we are going to see Zelos Ares going up against Marissa Kurosami, Morslet going up against Dark Ashtar and then Cryonova taking on Asterion. Plenty to play for in group I here. I should also point out that this could be interesting because Whoever tops group, I'm going to find out who my opponent is. And my opponent will be whoever tops group I. So not a good, so it could be a tough... Maybe there'll be motivation to not top this group. To avoid a matchup with the hosts. E -e -e. And I should point out, whoever finishes second in group I will take on a fourth place team as well. Very interesting stipulations, isn't it? So yes, well, the top two is going to be Dark Ashtar and Marissa. It's going to be between them two. It might be motivated, and I feel like my opponent will probably be Dark Ashtar, but you never know, you never know. All c it can all change, and well, third place is up for grabs, and at the minute it's Cryonova sitting in third place, and they do have a favourable matchup against Astarion, whereas Mors and Zelos have to go up against Dark Ashtar and Marissa respectively, so I think I'd probably be surprised if Cryonova didn't get third place at this point, and his reward for finishing third place will be a match with Ultima Dino King, so <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to finish third. Wow, it's good tough matches in Group I. It's like second place seems to be the best place to finish, but that's going to either Marissa or Dark Ashtar. Well, then again, Crownova could get a 3-0 win, but actually, no, even that wouldn't be enough because he lost to Marissa and Dark Ashtar, so yeah. The highest anyone can finish is third at this point, unless you're Marissa and Dark Ashtar. Right, there's all the stipulations gone, and yeah, let's let's get on with it. Let's conclude the group stage, and we are starting off with Zalos series against Marissa Kurosami. Well, put it this way, anything other than a 3-0 win eliminates Zalos from the tournament. Even a bonus point went win and enough because he lost the crown over in the last round. So yes, as for Zaylos's first first dino, it's a Ceratosaurus. So, so, honestly, I'd probably say one of the biggest surprises in this tournament is is Zaylos. I thought he would do really, I thought he'd do well in this tournament, but it just really hasn't happened for him. Right, as for Marissa in the blue corner, we have Fukui Raptor. You know, Marissa could throw this match just to avoid a matchup with a host because you don't want to take me on because my Mega Raptor will rip your dinos and you what? <laughs> Although I will say our host in this tournament has not been convincing has not been convincing at all and been very stuttery so they'll, they'll fancy their chances Of course, again, you probably take your chance so is it better to take your chances against a stuttering host than a possible bad matchup against a 4th place team? You never know, do you? And again, with regards to the fourth place teams, they will all be randomly placed. Of course, there is one stipulation where you're not where you're not allowed to play someone from the same group as you in the last 32. Well, ooh, they lost getting the credit. Oh, oh wow. Well, the uh, Fukui Raptor's dead. And it's oh wow! <laughs> Yeeting the Fukui Raptor into sh ribbons, and it's Zalos with the 1-0 lead. Remember, he needs to win 3-0 to give himself a fighting chance. Well, they'll put him on eight points, which means he'll probably he'll be in the playoff because <laughs> quite a few people are on eight points, as I said. Okay, as for Marissa's second dino, it's a super duper camera. Await the mode on two, I think. Yeah. I'm starting to remember. I mean, I should. It's been like five. I've had like five matches of these things. I should remember. Over a hundred matches. In fact, 135. This being the 133rd match in this tournament. Ah. Well, they're going to give Zelos some props. They're pulling up a fight. Oh. Well, he hasn't felt one-sided. Oh. Bloody hell! I'm full HP! Hang on, what type is this Serata? It, it has to be heroic type. Because both the Fukui Raptor and the Kama's crits were paper. It has to be heroic type. Well, the 3-0 might be on. It might be on for Zelos.
Actually, I think actually now that I think about it, because Crown Nova got to play a Starry on. I think Zalos might be out anyway. I just thought of that. <laughs> oh bless him! We might actually get a three 0 win, yeah. Gotta give Zalos some props, but you gotta ask the question: Where has this been? You know, this is the Zalos I was expecting to see in this tournament, and we haven't seen it at all. Well, we saw glimpses of it again. Yeah, it has to be heroic type. But yeah. Oh, it's not going to be a 3-0 win. Oh, no. <laughs> well, Zaylos is going to win this match, I think. Pretty sh pretty certain. But you got to give Zaylos some props. He ran in close. But unfortunately, it is group stage elimination for Zaylos Aries. But they are really finishing their tournament in style. And just reminding everyone of what they can do. Or can Marissa come back? In the comeback of all comebacks. Oh! Hang on a minute, Z lost one, you'll even get a bonus point win. Yeah, I think Z lost was going to be knocked out anyway because one of Astarion and Cryonova was going to get points. And, well, if Cryonova got any form of points, then that would eliminate Z lost. Oh, oh, there's the tag team. And if Astarion won, then they would be above Zaylos because they beat them, I believe. Yeah, there it is. That should be the bonus point. Yeah, there it is. Well, finishing their tournament in some style Zaylos series. I think one shot in two of Marissa's dinosaurs with a Ceratosaurus. Yeah, it had to be heroic type. It has to be heroic type. Wow. Heroic type could be busted. Really, really busted. I mean, it helped that he got the jet shuriken off with the crits, but yeah. Un unlucky from Zaylos here. Really good effort, though. Definitely a good effort, but just came up short. But at least they got a win to finish, in the, finish the tournament in style. Right, we can update the table and we can move. Oh, and I should also point out that that matchup will now confirm the Dark Ashtar will win Group I and have a showdown with the hosts in the last 32. And as for Marissa Kirasame, it'll be a matchup against a fourth place team. Goody, I'm going up against Dark Ashtar. Speak of the devil, he's up next, taking on Morslet. But before that, we're going to look at the table. Well, I have to say, Zalos was unfortunate not to get a 3-0 win there. If he had got a 3-0 win, it would have been it would have actually been on. The Starion's only on four points. Then all they would have to do is beat Crown over and Crown over get nothing. No losing bonus point, and then Zalos would go through, providing Morsel gets beat by Dark Ashtar. It would have given given Zalos a fighting chance, but by virtue of the fact that they lost to Crown over in the last round, they are going home. They did put up a really good effort, really good effort. Just came up short. Well, that Ceratosaurus did some damage. But again, it begs the question, where was that last round? Where was that in the last four rounds? Well, it was kind of there against Moors, but where was that in the last couple of round matches when it mattered? Particularly against Crown Over. But anyway, that matchup, as I said, confirms that Dark Ashtar will be taking on Stranger Gamer, and Marissa Kurosame will be going up against a fourth place team, which could be, well, anyone to be honest, because there's so many people on eight points. Like, at the minute, we got Dan X Tactical, Dino Nerd, Alpha Trooper, and the Thunderstorm all on eight points. I'm afraid two of those are going to be knocked out. Which two? Well, we'll just have to see, won't we? Because there's nothing to separate them. Right, enough about that. On to our next matchup, which, as I said, is Dark Ashtar going up against Morslet. Right then, in the red corner for Dark Ashtar, we got the oh, an MVP, the Metria Camphosaurus. This is a tie specialist that actually works. Unlike a certain Mr. Gamma. And it is the, one of the biggest reasons why Dark Ashtar has won four out of four. Right now then, in the blue corner, for Mort, we have a Yanchungasaurus. And well, I'm already bricking myself with matchup in the last 32 because frickin' Metric Amphosaurus is gonna have a frickin' advantage over my frickin' Megaraptor. 
and then freaking Armatus comes in with his freaking OP armor, and then I gotta use freaking Dynonicus to freaking 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 it some bloody Dynonicus. Can Moors end the Dark Ashtar's winning streak? Oh, that's a good start. If he can kill this Metric Amphosaurus quick, it's on for Moors. A win for Moors will guarantee her place in the last 32. Well, it'll take her to nine points, which will go, which will mean she'll go above Cryonova into third place, and it will mean she will be clear of Astarion as well. And I think that will also eliminate Astarion. Well, I'll just have, I'll have to double check to be sure, but a win will definitely take Moors through, either in third place to have a showdown with Ultima Dino King. Or as one of the best 4th place teams, because she'll be above the 8 point threshold. And she'll be, as I said, she'll be clear of Astarion in 5th. Well, I think 6th. Well, she'll be clear of Astarion, put it that way. And so far so good for Moors. The Metriacanthosaurus going down, not even getting a hit. That's not supposed to happen. Oh, hang on, has it gone down? Might survive this. I <laughs> survived. Oh, well. Got off a tie, but it's too little too late. The Metriac Amphosaurus doesn't survive, so it doesn't get the heat eruption. Moore's in a 1-0 lead, which is not what I expected. Right, as for Dark Ashtar's second dino, we got Armatus, and Armatus is going to have to step up here because the Metriac Amphosaurus died early. Actually, I should point out, a win for Mors would also keep pressure on Cryonova as well, who is currently on 7 points, which would not be enough to go through as one of the best 4th place teams. And well, he won't want to get, he won't want to get, take a losing bonus point or a draw because I'll put him to 8 points and he'll, he'll join the other naughty buggers on 8 points. Well, look at this from Moors. We've seen it before, especially in the first matchup. The Yangchungasaurus dominated. Ooh, but it's Armatus. Dark Ashtar finally getting a hit. And it's a mole attack. Boosh. Ding, ding, ding. Remember... Oh, oh, well, I was going to say Armatus has spectral armor, but it's not going to matter because it's not going to survive. It ain't going to survive a fire cannon. Moore's doing all she can to secure the win. Well, she hasn't won yet. Okay, now she, now a 3-0 is possible now because this Utraptor has a tight disadvantage. Is Moore's going to win 3 now? She almost won 3-0 against Astarion. Can she do it against Dark Ashtar? That would be very un... well, I didn't expect that, did I? I thought the Metricamphosaurus would have fared better, but it didn't. Ooh, it's Alpha Dark. Will the Alpha Dark be kinder to, uh, to Dark Ash Dark than in comparison to when Moors used it? Oh, definitely. Will the Yangchengosaurus survive? Oh, it does. Needed the Dino Man statue there. But this time, we'll finish it off. Dark Ashtar not defeated yet. And there'll be no 3 0 win for Mors. Actually, I should point out if the Uteraptor can kill this Spino quick, then Dark Ashtar will be back in the driving seat because the Uteraptor will have the tight advantage against the Pro So if. But if Moors gets off hits with a Spino, which she probably will, then I'd probably say she's going to win, even with that type disadvantage. That could happen. Oh, it's a tie. Ties will suit Moors, though. Oh, bless me. Oh, there's the crit. Yeah, I yeah, I think Moors is gonna win. Dark Ashtar's winning streak is gonna be ending. 
And quite emphatically, to be honest, Moore's completely dominant. Ooh, but is Dark Ashtar going to come back here? Mayfly coming in. The Spino will take some damage. Maybe not. Can Dark Ashtar do this? It would be a massive confidence, well, it'd be massive momentum going into the last 32 for Dark Ashtar if they can come from behind to win. And they have the tight advantage over the Pro Serolophus, so they'll do extra damage as well. I mean, the result doesn't matter for Dark Ashtar. I mean, they, they've already won the group. They, they, the, the work is done. Is all on Moors to get the win because they need it. Oh, it's a tie. One tie will do it for Moors. Oh, they just can't get it. Is Dark Ashtar gonna win? Well, if this lands on the big one, then this is gonna be very interesting. Okay, it's just a stuffed teddy. <laughs> Moors getting out of jail there. Okay, there it is. <laughs> I think Moors can breathe a sigh of relief, but Dark Ashtar was really threatening a comeback. But it didn't happen, and Moors gets a big win against Dark Ashtar to end his winning streak. Well, that changes things, doesn't it? I don't think any. I don't think I expected both Moors and Zaylos to win their matches, but they have. Let's have a look at the table. Yep, yeah, that is Moore's safely through to the last 32, either in third place or as one of the best fourth place teams. She will note she can, well, if even if Astarion wins 3-0, Moore's will still be above them by virtue, well, it, it, put it that way, it doesn't matter. Moore's will finish third or fourth, no matter what happens in this next matchup. So Moore's is safely through to the last 32, and nine points is above the eight point threshold as well. So she won't have to worry about any form of playoff to get through. So Moors safely through to the last 32. As for Crown over in Astaria, no, they still got a bit of work to do to secure their passage to the last 32. A win, well, a win for Crown over will guarantee it. Anything else, and well, they'll, well, a losing bonus point or a draw will make things a bit nervous for Crown over. But a defeat will knock him out of the tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, let's conclude the group stage. With Crown Over going up against Astarion. Right then, in the red corner for Crown Over, it's Neil Venator. Crown Over needs to get the win to secure their safe passage to the last 32 and secure a, a date with Ultima Dino King. Although a losing bonus point would do it as well. Or oh, and a draw as well, which would take them to 8 points. But, you know, then they become the, one of the other pain in the asses who are also on 8 points. As for Astarion, in the blue corner, we have Decreosaurus. Astarion, a 3-0 win will guarantee passage to the last 32. A bonus point win will do it as well. Well, we'll take them to 8 points, so again, they'll join the other naughty little tots on 8 points. So yeah, all to play for here for these two. And it's Cryonova who strikes first. Anything other than that, a bonus point win will eliminate Astarion. So Astarion needs at least a bonus point win to give himself a chance. Cryonova just needs to win or to get any form of points. So the pressure's on Astarion really. And they are living up to it so far, getting off a tragic sphere. But Dino Illusion has been triggered there. No shockwave though. Well, there goes the Dino Illusion. Boosh! Good start from Astarion, though. Well, actually, it's been kind of even, but yeah, Astarion's starting good. Now they've had a good start. Another Tragic Sphere, and this might be curtains for Neo Veneto. Well, this Shockwave will confirm it. Because, well, the, wor the worst that can happen for Astarion is a tie. And a tie will kill Neo Veneto. Go for the crit there. 
and it is indeed a tie. So Crown over landing some cheeky damage as the Neo Venator bows out and now Astarion's in the driving seat because Crown over second Dino is a Cachyrodontosaurus. Now Crown over could be in some trouble because this Cachyrodontosaurus has the tight disadvantage against the Decreosaurus. But I feel like if we can get some ties, Crown over could use Move Breaker to his advantage. Just have to see, won't we? Oh, that's a tie. But again, that might help Crown over because the fire cannon's gone, so the crit will deal normal damage. As you were about to see. Move Breaker, possible. Well, it well did backfire. Look at that. If that. Although I think even if that was a, if that was a fire cannon, I think the Creosaurus would have survived. So Move Breaker really backfiring there. And the chance of automatic qualification, gone for Astarion. But they can still secure the bonus point win if this Tajongosaurus kills Kakirodontosaurus and Paris Dinotector. Well, they can get to 8 points. Which won't be a guarantee, but at least give them a chance. Elemental power will definitely help the Tajongosaurus. Astarion getting the first hit. Not much damage dealt, however. All the power's in the crit. Oh, that's a tie! It does have Sand Trap the um, Tajongosaurus, so ties do favour it. But that will favour the Kaka getting off a hit. Will we see Vault first? Indeed we do! Can Crown overturn the screw on this match? Remember, Crown over needs at least a losing bonus point to put them on the 8 point threshold. Any form of win will do it for Crown, will guarantee their qualification. Oh, the Tajongosaurus just cannot get a crit! Crown over is not having it. Yeah, I, th I think that's going to be it for Astarion. Oh, we've got a Sand Trap, but yeah, Tajongosaurus is on a sliver of health. The odds are Crown Over is going to land some damage of Ed of some kind. So yeah, I think that's going to be it for Astarion. I can't see Tajongosaurus killing Paris Dinotector with that amount of health left. Based on how this match has gone as well. Yeah, there it is. Crown Over getting the 2-1 lead. And that is curtains for Astarion in this tournament. Even if they win this match, which they could still win. It will not be enough. That also means... Well, actually, no, it doesn't. Because Crown Over could win and go above Mons. But anyway, that's for the third dino. It is the Super Anti-Ceratops. Ah, uh, unlucky from Astarion there. I thought they, again, I thought they would do better than they have in this tournament. Because I like the look of their teams. But, you know, it just didn't happen for them. In a group that has seen a lot of one-sided matches as well. And I think... Astarion in particular has been on the bad end of it. Well, Cryonova looking very impressive here. Need to check the Awaken mode real quick. Three. Ooh, but the Anti-Ceratops not going down yet. Astarion taking out the Karka. Boosh. So we are level packing both combatants down to their last dinosaurs. Skip! Crown over third dino being para para. Ba -da -ba -da. Ooh, this could be awkward because I don't have a screenshot for this guy for, the, for this guy in the dino tector on this field. It'd be awkward, couldn't it? You never know, we might see the dino tector. I, I very much doubt it, but again, you never know. And I don't think we're going to see the Awaken mode, but I've already got a screenshot of this guy. Is that going to be it for Crown Over? Is the job done? Is that it? Egg attack coming in. Okay, that's once. Ooh, Anti-Ceratops getting another hit. It's a Venom fan. Well, Crown Over has secured the 8-point threshold with that attack. The losing bonus point secured. 
So Crownover could join one of them naughty tots on eight points. Ooh, is a tie. But he won't need to because this is going to be game over for our Starion. Crown over, getting the win they need to secure qualification from the group stage and get a showdown with Ultima Dino King. And to add insult to injury, Light Recovery takes Paris's health above half, so Astarion doesn't even get a losing bonus point. And unfortunately, it is elimination for Astarion, but a good win there for Crown Over, getting some good momentum going into that last 32 round. Now then, let's have a look at the table, and let's have a look how all the groups finished. Well, that is how Group I will finish, ladies and gentlemen. Dark Ashtar topping Group I, getting that showdown with Stranger Game in the last 32. Marissa Kurosame in second place, oh, only by virtue of the fact that they lost the Dark Ashtar. And they will have a showdown against one of the fourth place teams. And then Crown over, getting third place there on 10 points. They will have a match against Ultima Dino King to look forward to in the last 32 round. And then Moore's going through as one of the best fourth place teams on nine points. And then poor old Zalos and Astarion bowing out of the tournament. So yep, yeah, that is it. That is the group stage. Very enticing, very enticing. Well, safe to say, looking at all the groups, out of the fourth place teams, Pilk is going through. Random Shy Ghost goes through. Random Guy 86 is going through. And Morslet is going through. But we still have one more spot left for... One of the best fourth place teams who will get it it will be between danix tactile dino nerd alpha trooper and the thunderstormer and how will this work well it'll be a playoff so we will have well uh, the matches will be randomized so we will have two playoff matches so say for example it will be thunderstorm against dino nerd and danix tactile against alpha trooper and then the winner of those two matches will play each other and the winner of that match will go through as one of the best fourth place teams. oh you enjoyed please leave a like and stay tuned for those next matchups. And until then, this is Training Gamer, signing out.